Listen up, TPS fans. We're doing a giveaway. We're giving away either Madden 18 or NBA 2K18. Step one, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Step two, this video needs 5,000 likes. Once we reach 5,000 likes, we give away a copy of Madden 18 or NBA 2K18. Before we give away the game, you need to comment because we'll pick a random winner from the comments. The winners will be announced on the TPS Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram social media pages. So follow there as well. Good luck, TPSers. Finding a franchise quarterback in the NFL can be like finding a needle in a haystack. But throughout history, some NFL teams are able to replace one franchise quarterback with another. I'm Daquan Young, and today we dive into 10 NFL teams that have always had a good quarterback. And a big shout out to Starsky Gaming for suggesting this video. Number 10, the Atlanta Falcons. Chris Chandler was a Pro Bowl selection in 1997 and 1998 with the Falcons. 98 was a big year for him as he tossed 25 touchdowns and 3,154 passing yards. He helped the Falcons go 14-2 while reaching the Super Bowl before falling to John Elway's Denver Broncos. After Chandler, the Falcons wound up with Michael Vick in 2001. The four-time Pro Bowler is obviously best remembered for his insane dual threat abilities throughout his career. And then when Vick got into trouble with the law, the Falcons got Matt Ryan. He won the 2016 League MVP award and guided the Falcons to a Super Bowl 51 berth. Number nine, the New England Patriots. The Patriots didn't exactly have a franchise quarterback until Drew Bledsoe came along in 1993. A three-time Pro Bowler with the Patriots, Bledsoe led them to a Super Bowl 31 berth. Though they fell to the Green Bay Packers, Bledsoe also led the Patriots to four playoff bursts during his time as a starter. And when he went down with an injury in 2001, everybody remembers Tom Brady coming off the bench and leading them to five Super Bowls. Number eight, the San Diego Chargers. The Chargers had one of the league's best pocket passers in Dan Fouts. He spent his entire 15 year career with him. Racking up 254 touchdowns and 43,040 passing yards, Fouts was a six-time Pro Bowler and took home the 1982 league MVP. Long after Fouts retired, the Chargers had Drew Brees for four years. After cutting ties with Brees, they turned to Phillip Rivers. Through his first 13 seasons, Rivers was named to six Pro Bowls and racked up 45,833 yards and 314 touchdowns. Number seven, the Denver Broncos. The Broncos didn't have much to celebrate until John Elway came along in 1983. He won the 87 MVP and led the franchise to Super Bowl 32 and 33 championships. Elway finished his career with 300 touchdowns and 51,475 passing yards. The Broncos then had Jake the Snake Plummer for four years. Plummer was the 2005 Pro Bowler and led the Broncos to the AFC Championship game that same year. A few years after Plummer left, Denver wound up with Peyton Manning. Are we skipping the color era? The Sheriff led them to a pair of Super Bowl appearances, including the Super Bowl 50 championship. Number six, the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals had Ken Anderson from 1971 to 1986. A man who was named to four Pro Bowls while taking home the 1981 NFL MVP. Anderson finished with 197 touchdowns and 32,838 passing yards. After Anderson, the Bengals had Boomer Esiason for nine years. Esiason was the 1988 NFL MVP and tossed 247 touchdowns and 37,920 passing yards. Over a decade later, Carson Palmer came to town. He spent eight years with the Bengals and was a two-time Pro Bowler during his time there. And when they traded Palmer away in 2011, they drafted Andy Dalton, who had 22,214 passing yards and 86 touchdowns through his first six NFL seasons. Number five, the New York Giants. The G-Men had the iconic YA title in the 60s, and it took them nearly two decades to finally replace him. Nonetheless, they wound up with Phil Simms, who had 199 touchdowns and 33,462 passing yards. Simms guided the Giants to a pair of Super Bowl championships also. After Simms retired, the G-Men had Kerry Collins for five years. He wasn't a superstar, but he always tossed over 3,000 yards and led them to a Super Bowl 35 berth. After Collins, well, there's Eli Manning, a two-time Super Bowl champion himself. Number four, the Indianapolis, slash Baltimore Colts. The Colts franchise was home to Johnny Unitas from 1956 to 1972. During that time, he led them to three NFL championships, one Super Bowl, and was a three-time AP NFL MVP, undoubtedly one of the greatest of his era. The Colts then had Burt Jones for nine years, who took home the 1976 NFL MVP. And then the Colts had Peyton Manning from 1998 to 2010, the all-time leader in passing yards and touchdowns. When Manning left Indy in 2012, they got themselves another elite franchise quarterback in Andrew Luck. Number three, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh had Hall of Famer Bobby Lane from 1958 to 1962. 
Lane was named to two Pro Bowls during his time in the Steel City. After Lane was gone, the Steelers wound up with Terry Bradshaw. The 1978 MVP was quarterback of the Steelers dynasty in the 70s that brought home four Super Bowl championships. Pittsburgh remained relevant in the 90s with a solid quarterback in Neil O'Donnell. But once this team wound up with Ben Roethlisberger via the 2004 NFL Draft, things changed quickly. Big Ben led the Steelers to Super Bowl 40 and 43 championships. Number two, the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys became America's team in the 70s with the emergence of Roger Stoddard. He led Big D to a pair of Super Bowl championships and was a six-time Pro Bowler. They didn't call him Captain America for nothing. The Cowboys started the dynasty in the 90s thanks to Hall of Famer Troy Aikman. He led Dallas to three championships and was also named the six Pro Bowls. A few years after Aikman left, Dallas had Tony Romo, who was named to four Pro Bowls and racked up 34,183 passing yards and 248 touchdowns. Now they have a rising star in Dak Prescott. Number one, the Green Bay Packers. It all started with Bart Starr in 1956. Just look at his resume. Two Super Bowl rings, two Super Bowl MVPs, four Pro Bowl selections, and a 1966 NFL MVP award. Starr tossed for 152 touchdowns and 24,718 passing yards. Incredibly high numbers in this era. Decades later, Green Bay wound up with Brett Favre. The Gunslinger won three MVPs with the Packers and led them to a Super Bowl 31 championship. He held the all-time records in touchdowns, passing yards, and quarterback victories before Peyton Manning. When Favre left Title Town in 2008, Green Bay turned to the best quarterback right now, Aaron Rodgers. Two MVPs and a Super Bowl 45 championship. We wouldn't be surprised if he ends up as the greatest of all time when he retires. Lambeau Field is just always home to a great quarterback, plain and simple. Which NFL team do you think has had the best quarterbacks of all time? Join us in the comments below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, Clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we truly appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to Total Pro Sports though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.